All right, guys, uh, welcome to Ben Clamor Presents, the collaboration episode. Uh, in this first episode, we have two, I would say, highly esteemed young guests. Uh, we have Jean Arnaud and we have Recep Recepi, uh, two guys that are behind, I think, probably one of the most highly anticipated collaborations in a long time. Uh, it is a highly complicated watch that we have since revealed on Hodinkee and elsewhere uh, about two days ago. Um, I, I think, Recep, why don't you begin by telling us what it is, and then we can go into how this project came to be. Yeah, so, so um, it's true, it's a complicated watch. So it's a turbine chronograph, so a five-minute turbine chronograph. And we had a Sunri on this, on this watch, who, when you start your chronograph, every past minute you will have a Sunri hmm. remind you that it's already one minute. Okay. And uh, why we did it, it's very, very simple. I think, uh, you know, I think a lot of people know that John is a passionate guy. Mm -hmm. We have a few discussions since, since years now. And, uh, you know, we were discussing about, you know, he had some crazy idea now. He's launching this watch price. And, you know, honestly, I'm a very sensitive guy. And I remember always this, this time that uh, when I started, it was not easy. And you don't have today this possibility to doing or to participate and somebody can help you for achieving your project, I think it's important. And when he tell me this and uh, he proposed me this collaboration for launching all this, I see, why not? Why not? <laughs> why right? not? And, uh, you know, we were talking about passion and, and really, I think I'm happy today to, to do it. And, and John, so how did you come up with the idea for the, the watch prize, first of all, and then how did you decide on Recep? I guess George Daniels was busy at the time, so you, you got stuck with him? <laughs> I got stuck with him. I mean, yeah. you know, it's, uh, it was my last resort. In yeah. it. <laughs> no, more seriously, I mean, the watch prize was uh, one of the first ideas I had when I started at LV uh, two and a half years ago. And I've said the story in the past, but when I started getting interested in watches, I thought that every watchmaker worked in the way that he's working, which is you know, a few watchmakers in the workshop doing everything by hand from start to finish, regulating the watch, looking into every single detail. I noticed very quickly that, you know, most watches, most watchmakers are actually more like the automobile industry where mm -hmm. it's done on a conveyor belt and everything like that. And yeah. so it's much less romantic than it was uh, in my mind. Fast forward a couple of years, I discovered independent watchmaking uh, through, you know, uh, the craze that everybody's known now for the last, you know, five, six years. And that's when I sort of rediscovered uh, my passion for watchmaking and the fact that a lot of people were working for that. And so when I started LV, I was thinking, okay, the trend is around independent watchmaking today. How do we make sure that this trend continues over time and we make sure that we can support this side of the industry as much as possible? And so that was the I initial idea and founding story of the LV Watch Prize of saying, how can we make sure that this trend keeps on living for the next, you know, 50 years? Mm -hmm. And the only solution I came up with was using, you know, LV's brand equity to shed a, a spotlight on that part of the industry. Mm -hmm. LV is going to, you know, stay in business for, for many, many years. And uh, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and the idea is to really put a light towards uh, that part of the industry. And so to support that initiative, we wanted to, to bring a lot of... Uh, and, you know, young watchmakers in as well and sure. uh, start this collaborating process. So it's the first one of five that we're going to do. And, you know, I want to say the most foundational one as well by starting everything like that and, uh, and doing this amazing piece. So maybe a little bit more on, on the LV watch prize mm -hmm. in particular. So what exactly is it? So it's a prize that rewards young watchmakers mm -hmm. that happens once every two years and has a different series of processes. So you can apply, it's free uh, to apply in general. And any, as long as you've made a watch and commercialized the watch in the last year, you can apply to the prize and a series of experts within you know, the watch industry will vote whether that is a uh, good or bad project, et cetera, et cetera. And then choose from the 20 semifinalists that we found down to five and down to one winner. The winner is, receives a, a cash prize, mm -hmm. but that's not really the most important part. The most important part is we then guarantee him or her mentorship for at least a year from us at Fabrique du Temps, but also from the people of the uh, expert committee. So mm -hmm. the people that already liked that watchmaker will also bring support to that person for, for help, you know. And, you know, you were telling me that at the start it was particularly difficult, and I think that help for many people that are not as established as you is uh, super important. 
I can tell you that it's important because again, you know, when you start mostly, you know, you have this uh, this idea and you believe on this idea, but honestly, you don't know that you don't have only the watchmaking process, you know, because you're doing a watch, but you have to meet people, you sure. have to present it, you have to understand how it works. And for sure, I think it's really good help. Yeah. And I know that I will go a little more fast if, if I if I had the possibility to to have some help for sure. Yeah, and I think it's probably hard to to imagine for for maybe some of the more recent uh, fans of of Acrivia. Um But there was a time when it wasn't so easy for you. No, it was not. What was that you like? Know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I remember meeting you then. You yeah. know. <laughs> no, you know, I, I don't. Honestly, it's it's really a pleasure. I'm I'm really in a way I'm happy to to leave this, and I can say this because today everything is going well. But for sure, it was a hard time because I remember when I started for the first three years, you don't have any sales. You know, just waiting. And I can tell you that the only thing that keeps you motivated is the passion and really you believe, you know, and say, okay, I'm sure one time, one day will come, you know. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it was, it, was, it was hard. And again, because I remember I was thinking about the project, I was thinking about the watch, I did the watch, and I came and I was I believing like everybody will come to me and wanted the watch. And, and yes, it was nice. But after that, you have to meet people. You have to meet you. We have to meet you. <laughs> don't you forget spend that. Spend yeah. time, you know. <laughs> yeah. No, but, you know, to explain, you know. And if you don't know, yeah. if you don't know anybody, how, how you can do? But in the end, the dream is realized, right? Now everybody... Uh... The dream is realized. So. <laughs> You're <laughs> doing okay. You know, yeah, uh, yeah I'm with the best people. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, it, so the, the AK-01, in, in many ways, almost, there's a little bit of that in, in this watch, I think. Is that not the case? I mean, the, the tourbillon, the chronograph, I mean, there's... On this watch? A little yeah. Bit. yeah. It's, it's, it's very simple. Again, you know, I'm quite sensitive about it. And I started with this watch because for me, I remember when I was in, 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 in Patrick Philippe first, I had the first tourbillon I had in my whole life, I had the 10 days tourbillon. Mm. And when I had this watch, I really became in love with this watch. I don't know why you turned the watch. It was incredible. And yeah. I realized that at this moment, I want to be independent. You know, I say, okay, I want to do in one day my tourbillon. And the chronograph was one of my favorite complications. So I work after for BNB Concept. You know, this is where I met Enrico and Michel. And, uh, you know, late, uh, I used this base for, for my first movement, you know. And why I come back with this uh, chronograph tourbillon? Mm -hmm. Because, really, I want just to pay, uh, how I say, to, to say them, Thank you, because in a way it was because of them also. Mm -hmm. And okay, it's totally new chronograph. Sure. It's totally new turbine because it's five minute uh, turbine. Uh, and you know, you have to do a little deeper. You you have to go a little more deeper to show them that, you know, so I learned it, a yeah. little, you know, yeah, I yeah, learned yeah. a little. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think this is the best way of saying, you know, thank you. And, and uh, you know, it's an homage. It is. Yeah. yeah, so it was really. purposeful that the, the oh, chronograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I wanted to do like a chronograph turbine and trying to do something different. So this is why you have in the front, you have hour and minute. You can still see the mechanism that yeah. uh, originally in the, in the first chronograph turbine that they did, you can see the mechanism. And I, I think was the, was really at uh, this moment was really the identity. Why people pay attention to this watch? Because it was for the first time you're seeing the chronograph in front right. back, back then. You know? right. And so this is why I come back also with this watch with this uh, hour minute in front. Mm -hmm. It's a fire dial. You can see all the mechanisms. You can see that something happened here. And you have also the hammer at four. Mm -hmm. And on the back, we put the chronograph, you know. So this time uh, you have the 60, uh, second and 60 minute, but central chronograph. Mm -hmm. And again, when you enclench every minute, you will have the sunray. And, and, you know, d during the process, I always remember, we very, <laughs> very quickly discussed the chronograph, Tobillon, and everything was clear, you know, sure. and from then. And then, I don't know, probably a year in, it was like, actually, one, one meeting, you know, we were having a, sort of regular meetings here mm -hmm. and there a couple of, every couple of months. And uh, one time he's like, actually, I have an extra surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so there is, a chiming, sound, yeah. there, there is a chiming mechanism. <laughs> He was he was working on it for a while and, and ended up working quite well for this watch. So it's it's really impressive. No, you know I think I think the good part of watchmaking I think you know exploring learning this is something very 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 interesting. And mm -hmm. for me you know when you had the possibility of doing something better 
for sure I will try, you know, and it was this option that I had, for sure it was a complication that we had in mind, mm -hmm. but we wanted just to find a, a mechanism that be able to, you know, to put this on re, but without taking energy on the movement, you know. So. Mm -hmm. And I remember as well, very early on, we were discussing, you know, what's your favorite, you, the case of Louis Vuitton that you prefer, the design, everything like that. And uh, one of the first questions he asked me was, okay, can I really like the tambour, but can I rework it a little bit? <laughs> sure, <laughs> uh, you know, <laughs> would you like, expect anything else? Exactly. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, okay, no problem. We, yeah. we, we, we can work around that. And, uh, and, you know, this design is really, truly unique. They were very kind. <laughs> we give him sure. a lot of, lot of honesty, a uh, lot of freedom, but yeah. at the same time, you know, I think when you look at the watch, you can right. honestly see that it's Louis Vuitton. Oh, absolutely. You know, but this is, I think, the beauty because, you know, we have to be, I think this is what I like personally. When I look at, okay, I can exactly see that it's from Louis Vuitton, but mm -hmm. still has some small changes, subtle changes that it's, it's really a blend of the two. Yeah. yeah. The logs are very, you know, Acrivia and Reche Prechepi and, and the case is very Louis Vuitton as well. For sure. Yeah. I love the, the the different changes and everything like that that, yeah. were, that were made, right? It, it, I mean, we'll, we'll obviously have, you know, close-ups of, of the watch and you'll have seen them by now, but they're, they're really almost two different watches, right? I mean, this is very uh, translucent, very modern, very uh, long lumen in some way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then on the other side, you have Grand Fru enamel. Yes. Uh, very traditional and, and both your name and, and Louis Vuitton on, on the dial. Uh, and I think what's kind of so interesting is, you know, the best collaborations often come when, when neither one, neither party needs the other one at all. Yeah. I, I think back, I, I went uh, to an event many years ago uh, that was hosted by Johnny Ive and uh, pierre Alexis Dumont at Hermes. And, you know, they, they, there's an Hermes Apple Watch, right? Neither one of those brands need the other one at all, but they did it because they have respect for each other. I think I can say resolutely that Louis Vuitton <laughs> does not need Recep, but I don't think you need them either, um, with the greatest respect. Um, and I think that's why this works so well. Yes. I agree with you. Yeah. Um, I, I can imagine that many people have come to you and asked to do collaborations. I'm, I, I'm sure many. I mean, you, LV does do many collaborations as well. Um, first one in watchmaking. First one in watchmaking. And the first time that the, the logos have been combined? First time ever in Louis Vuitton history that the LV logo has been combined with someone else's logo. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you, John. I mean, any, any product combined. That's that's crazy, right? I mean, you. I mean, you must think about the brands that LV has collaborated with: Supreme. I mean, several amazing artists, Hiroshi. I mean, just incredible people. And you, this little watchmaker from Kosovo, get. Uh, I don't get, know. Yeah. I don't know. I prefer to not think that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no. I, 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 I'm just curious. How, how did that uh, LV? Uh, I think nobody will be surprised. Learn is a very large company. Um, how did how did that happen? I mean, how did that go up the flagpole to uh, to make that happen? You want to know? It was, uh, I think, a, a huge learning process for both of us. Uh, he, I mean, you, you guys never worked with a let's say big company before, uh, and we've rarely worked with small companies before as well. Right. And so, it was also a, a sort of evolutive process yeah. where we first started, you know, very small, and then all of a sudden, when the project starting getting on its two feet, we started seeing movements prototypes, things like that, then you can see how, how it evolves, right? And so the team started building up and you know, a lot more people got involved in, in the process. Uh, we, we can be a lot more agile and, uh, and that's what I've learned in, in the process and I'm sure you've learned a lot as well uh, yeah. working with LV in general. Well, it was nice. It was nice because again, for me what I retain, I think again, just two men, not only because we have people around, sure. but what I'm saying like two men at the end who want to do something good. Right. And we make it possible. Even we, we didn't think that w would be that complex at mm. the end. But this was, I think this is the beauty, honestly. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, uh, explaining also to people, the, the most internal teams, there are about 30 to 40,000 people that work at LV. So <laughs> trying to educate everybody that what is Acrivia, <laughs> what is uh, <laughs> Recep yeah. and really trying to understand all of that is, is not, not an easy process by any means. I you can know? imagine. Uh, it's, it's not an easy process for, for a new handbag, so let alone for a new watch that complicated with everything. So, yeah. you know, it, it was a learning curve for everybody uh, yeah. inside, of the, inside of the company, but everybody's super excited about it. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the reception has been great so far. Yeah, and I, I think in, in, in many ways, I mean, first of all, you, you collaborate with, with Mr. Hagman on, yes. on cases. Yes. Uh, and he made this case. Yes. Yeah. He was also very excited. And I tell also to Jean, you know, it was really strange because I, I see my team was more motivated doing this watch than mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a couple of the guys. So, but anyway, no, but honestly, Mr. Hagman is really happy. He's really happy for this. To say, for instance, first, we don't say anything for who is. 
you know. Sure. And after that, we, we let him know. So he was really <laughs> excited, even more so anyway. That's amazing. Uh, Levis, you, Levis, you don't, don't get him off your projects too early on, you know, in the process. Yeah. Make sure that, uh... I mean, in, in, in many ways, I mean, thinking back to, to the watches that really shaped uh, the formative years for me when I was coming up as, as, a, as a younger guy, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, the, the Opus series, the Harry Winston Opus series, which was done by our friend Max Busser uh, when he was at Harry Winston. In, in, is, is that an inspiration for you at LV? I mean, is that something that you look to and say that was a really neat thing when you think about all the brands that were given, all the watchmakers, you know, FP and uh, Erwerk. I mean, I, the list goes on and on and on. For sure. But I mean, again, the, the um, landscape is completely different today. Yeah. Obviously, back then, independent watchmaking was not as big as today. For sure. Um, and the sort of the purpose of it is completely different as well. You know, all the proceeds for this watch will go towards the organization of the watch prize, it will. the cash prize as well, and things like that. And so there's no sort of for-profit uh, uh, ambition towards this project and the ones coming forward in the future. Right. So it's really about uh, celebrating the beauty of watchmaking in a way uh, and doing it with amazing people. So, you know, I'm obviously, everybody knows I'm a fan of watches and I'm, I'm very passionate about watchmaking in, in general. And it was really, sort of a pet project to make sure that a big brand like LV could celebrate a small niche in the watchmaking yeah. world in the most respectful way possible. Mm -hmm. And, you know, how does this correlate with the LV Watch Prize, apart from the financial side of things, is also to show the wider world and the people that are interested in independent watchmaking that uh, someone like RecShep might support that initiative uh, in, in a way by you know, uh, agreeing to do, do a collaboration like this and show that this is a serious initiative that's not only going to happen once, that's going to happen every two years for the next I don't know how many years. And, and it's really about uh, showcasing the commitment we have towards that part of the industry for as long as we, as long as we can. Right. And I, I think, in, and I'll, I'll let you speak to it, obviously, but you know, how does this kind of uh, reinforce your own ambitions for, for what you have coming with Daniel Roth, Shalgenta, LV? I'm sure it's all part of it. In a way, but it's like all separate projects. Yeah. So, you know, Shalgenta and Daniel Roth is, uh, you know, managed in a completely different way. Uh, they are their own brands with their own philosophies. And each of them as well work in their own different ways. Like Genta is not Roth and vice versa. Right. And that's really something that's close to my heart. I really want these brands to live within their own ecosystem and have, let's say, nothing to do with what LV has done there. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like LV has a completely different perspective to watchmaking. Everything is under La Fabrique du Temps, so we have one level of quality, one level of craftsmanship and everything like that. But the statements and ethos around all these brands are completely different. So it's really almost a, a sort of bipolar or tripolar the place in my head of trying to figure out how does Genta work, how does Roth work, and how does LV work in the watchmaking space. Mm -hmm. But I think, again, these are all small brands in themselves, uh, part, of the, uh, part of the watch industry. So and we, we're, still, we're still managing to do it, to, to make it work. Yeah, yeah. And what do you think of uh, Genta and Daniel Roth coming back? I think it's nice. You know, honestly, I think, uh, again, when I look at back for me, these brands, they was, they was really important, you know, inspiring many, and we're talking still about these guys again today, and I think it's important to make them still living in a way, you know, so mm. I think it's a really nice idea, and to say frankly, you, you know, so we, we, we not spoke about it, but <laughs> to say frankly, you know, when, when he told me about this, I was, uh, I was really supportive, and, 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 and we got together, visit him, and, you know, so it was really nice, it was sure. really nice, and you know, I respect everybody who did something important, and right. I think we should remember always. So we made a these guys make had an important impact in the industry, yeah. and yeah, I think it's important that these guys existing still. You know, in the, in the, they were independent watchmakers in their own in their own right Absolutely. back then. Yeah. Genta yeah. as well. You know, he's not sure. seen as an independent watchmaker. Pierre Michel Godet, yeah. someone that's totally True. not celebrated in the watch industry today, and he's the one that's at the origin of many many crazy complications. Mm -hmm. You might uh, like them, not like them, that's uh, up to everyone's states, but the, the complexity and the complication of it is, is quite crazy. Huh? Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the watch itself mm -hmm. as, a, as, as watch people. So how yeah. big is it? How thick is it? How many components? What do you love about it? What would you change about it? Oh, no, don't, don't. <laughs> you know, when, when people ask me what you want to change, for me, you know, this is a momentum. So yeah. when you finish a watch, you think it's, it's the Perfect. best. Yeah. 
But after that, you will always see many things that you want to change. But this is the beauty also. Again, what I like and personally what I really appreciate that we invent this mechanism that will help us and we give the sunry mm -hmm. without taking any energy on the movement. So this is why we think about a new a train of wheel. So we have another independent barrel will help this mechanism. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like escapement. Okay. Okay. And by taking the information on one came that is on the second counter. Okay. We give us, we make it, I don't know how you're saying, like make it free, like liberate. Yep, free it, yeah. Yeah. And every minute we'll have this chime. So the, the sonnery has a separate barrel dedicated to itself. Exactly. Interesting. And what I like the most really is this mechanism that we invent and we will use, we can use in many other projects that we have, honestly. Mm -hmm. So this is why for me personally, it's really important historically. Hmm. Is, is this the first uh, sonary attached to a chronograph in this way? Yes, it it's is. the first one. It's the first one ever. Hmm. And w was that the ambition when, when you guys came up with this or was it just something that happened? Honestly, yeah. I will tell you, for, for me, for me, and I will let after Jean talking, but for me, you know, you know, I had this, um, I'm very lucky guy, I feel, because today, you know, some people are wanted our watches and everything, but... Some people not, want your watches. No, in, in yeah, a few people, so we're lucky. <laughs> but what I'm saying, you know, today, I can't come back just and bring a, another watch and just doing something like same, yeah. normal. So, yeah. If I had the possibility, I want to go more deeper. And if you look at back, you know, you're talking about George Daniels, uh, that I really uh, love, you know, respect what he did. June, this guy, they really tried to push. And honestly, this is my dream, you know, to being able to do something that people will remember. Mm -hmm. I hope. I don't know if I will achieve it, but yeah. this is my, my, my focus. Yeah. I mean, in, in many ways, I would say that, that you are or maybe most well-known for like the watch that you're wearing on, mm -hmm. on your wrist, which is the contemporary uh, yes. chronometer. Um, but this, this is really more in the Acrivia kind of mindset, would you say? Yeah, you, you know, yeah, because until today we're seeing Acrivia more complex watches, true, but uh, for me, just two different lines, and uh, you know, uh, we will have uh, some other complication on, on more classic watches for sure. Is it, is, it the only, for sure. is it the only watch where both names are in it? Yes. Also, and also will be the last one that will have the Acrivia name. So. The last one that will have the Acrivia name. Yeah. The last Recep that will have the Acrivia name. On. No, it will be the last Acrivia. Really? Yeah. So that name will be retired? It's not retired, it's still mine and it will be there. Maybe I will doing an anniversary. You know, okay. I learned to say never, never, but it will be the last one. So the, the AK series? It's very heartbreaking, will... you know, for me <laughs> also. But I think it's, it's better. I think it's better to focus now in one thing because many people don't understand you know and i think it makes sense just to sign your watch with your with name. your name interesting so the ak's will say your name on them now yes in the future yeah. that's breaking news right here yeah one thing i, I particularly I love this. Yeah. <laughs> one thing i particularly love about it is that you know obviously you can always go deeper and deeper and deeper into the product yeah. and discover new things and you're talking about the names but to the discerned eye you'll notice that on the avant-garde sort of contemporary dial, you have the Acrivia name, which corresponds to the brand, <laughs> but on the more classic dial, you have the Recep Recepi, yeah. not the Acrivia, hmm. which corresponds to both brands very uh, elegantly, right? So that's something, again, we discovered throughout the process, and it was uh, sort of a little touch here and there that, that shows that it can be quite, uh, quite incredible. Explain to me that, you know, obviously the, the, the six kind of uh, indices here is, is really kind of a, an allusion to the, to the LV that is, I think, I may say, a kind of a modern icon, uh, obviously purposeful. Who, who did the dial design here? I did the dial design. You did? Yeah, but really, I was really inspired by Louis Vuitton. Yeah. This is why you're seeing this, like, square, you know? But here, for example, you have enamel, plicageur. In the square. In the yeah. square. Saffron color. Wow. And the sapphire, I think now it's an identity of, of really, when I look at now Louis Vuitton, yeah. always remember this. And I want to bring this identity. Hmm. 
So as, as, as a little boy growing up, did you ever think you would be sitting here working with Louis Vuitton? Honestly, no. I can imagine. No, I, I can't say this because, you know, I'm a dreamer. So I dream always. Yeah. And, and, uh, but, but honestly, not really. You know, again, I, I, I don't want to look at this image, you know. I prefer to being what I have to do. And, to, but but it's for sure. It's uh, I appreciate. I appreciate to to sharing this and to seeing people that appreciate our work. To seeing Jean that you know ask for this collaboration and we did. You know right. to being here with you. You know so I know that you were supportive always. So no, I try. Always. You know one thing. I, one thing I want to add as well is uh, not only the collaboration but also the way the collaboration is done, meaning that. It could have been done in much simpler ways, much more easy ways. Uh, I think you could put these two names together on anything, and they would sell. Exactly, <laughs> and, it's, and then it's on a quartz watch. Yeah. And, and and I mean, <laughs> it, it, it's obviously Rakshap's uh, vision and, and talent that uh, shows on this piece that no concession is made. Right. right. You have to go. You, he had to go through a, a different uh, mechanism completely, completely different movement. Yeah. World first complication. It's not something that was taken very lightly, so that's, uh, that's something quite impressive. Yes. As somebody that has uh, tried to buy his watches for many years, I can tell you he makes no compromise ever, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> There's no question about that. And so, Jean, you said that, that there will be five of these collaborations. Ten. Uh, sorry, five collaborations, right, correct. Right. Ten, ten yeah. pieces, five collaborations. Where, where does one go after Richard? Well, that's the, the, first of all, the big challenge and also the big responsibility as well, right? right? Because... Uh, the level is so high, the uh, name also has such great reputation, the brands, both of them, and especially the importance of this piece, both for Acrivia but also for Louis Vuitton, that, uh, again, there, are, there aren't many names which can, uh, can follow. But uh, I'm, I'm super happy about this first piece. Obviously, this is probably the most foundational one of them all, uh, and, and hopefully will be somehow remembered in, in watch history. I think so. so. So 10 pieces will be made. Uh, all sold through Louis Vuitton. Exactly. Right. Not right. through, not through uh, Acrivia. Um, can we talk about the price? So I don't know actually. No, I don't know. No, no. <laughs> it will be four hundred fifty thousand Swiss francs. Swiss francs. Yes. Okay. But obviously, the, what, what you learned in the development of this movement, you'll be able to use for. Oh yeah, yeah. I, th I think this is also. Uh, I think uh, even even Jean, I'm sure he's really happy because this is will help us for many, many other things. And I hope maybe some people will be inspired by this. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, to making chime every minute requires a lot of energy. Absolutely. So this is why for many, many other projects, I'm sure many people will be inspired. And I'm happy. And I, and I think very few people will manage to do it because of how complicated it is to do, right? It's complex. <laughs> it's, it's, it's complex and, and yeah, it's complex. And, and, and I have to say, I mean, I, you know, when I first saw the images o over email, I, I thought it would actually be quite a bit larger than it is. I mean, that, that's kind of always the, the struggle with highly complicated watches, yes, just how sure. physically large they are. Um, and this is really not overbearing. Yeah. It, it's really not. But you're seeing the steps, you know, also for the eyes, it's really nice because you don't really see the thickness at the end. Mm -hmm. You know, the steps like how we work the case. But at the end still, I think it's, um, it's not big because it's, uh, we're less than 12, so... Millimeters. Less than 12. It's not bad. That's not bad. <laughs> not bad. Yeah, Very wearable. Yeah, you have a future. <laughs> <laughs> Could be no, a daily no, watch. No, you, know? you know, again, you know, we're trying to do always better and better, but honestly, it's good. And don't forget, you have enamel, so take a lot of space also. Mm -hmm. So have two dials, you lose a lot of space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that there's also some like incredibly uh, Louis Vuitton centric. Um, Details. So it says uh, Louis cruises with Recep <laughs> in script on the on the case, and then you have this amazing trunk over here with the the joint logo, uh, obviously made for for this watch. I mean, we things that to, are quintessential LV. We, we we had to rise up to the occasion as well, right? <laughs> uh, and make what uh, what we know but what best to do. You know, we've made, been making trunks for close to 170 years now, so right. it's quite uh, quite important for us. And the whole hand painting process uh, took about you know six months for the. For the ten, uh, the ten trunks. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. Everything's done by hand. Like the way the circle is made, like the the reference towards the back dial, right? It's mm -hmm. you use like old, the old school chalkboard, you know, where you use the string and do this circle thing here. 
all of that is just entirely made by hand to, and you have to respect the right proportions and everything. It's really quite, quite something. Yeah. The problem, you know, after that, you want to change all your case. <laughs> so this is the problem. <laughs> it's making you step your game up here. Yeah. Super cool. Um, so just, just so that people know at home, although it will be linked back to the existing Hodian key story, uh, how large is, is the case? 39.5. And how thick? Less than 12. So, so 11.90. Uh, so. You made sure of that, yeah. <laughs> 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 Trying to make sure. Making so, sure the sapphires are. <laughs> yes. yeah. uh, so really very wearable for a, you know, a highly complicated watch. I think so. Yeah. I think, again, you know, this is what we, we were able to do mm -hmm. uh, for such a uh, complex watch. Yeah. One thing as well, like if you look at it from the side, you know, the hands are really sort of floating mm -hmm. from the first down. And that's what I find quite incredible because of how the, you know, sapphire works around. It really shows you the, the side of the hands and you have the impression that it's floating out. Yeah, I mean, it, it really is, as it says on the dial, it's, it's Louis Vuitton and it's uh, a Crivia together. For real. Well, thank you guys for, for joining me here today. It is a true honor to have both of you. I mean, two leaders of, of the current generation and certainly the future. So can't wait to see what you guys do next. Um, can't wait to see who the other collaborators are. Good luck to them. <laughs> I wish them all the best. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thank, thank you. you very much for having us. Thank you very much. Thank it was you. a pleasure.